All right, so, well, let me think of how I'm gonna start. That's important. <laughs> we'll try to make it as PG as possible. You go first. All right, our best Matt story. I've heard stories about Matt yelling and how he can be. One day, walking down through the hallway out of nowhere, you know, there goes a big Matt Haley fist through the <laughs> hallway wall. I always like the phone call from Matt Haley. It was like, where you're like looking at whether you want to answer or not, and then you're like, you have to answer. You have to answer. Because, because. I'll only yell at you on the phone, never face to face. Never face to face, so you're like, Ugh. He's like, nobody ever answers my call. <laughs> yeah. If you miss yeah. out one call, it's, you're, it's. But then why there's the call that's like, me. I need a favor. Why do you like, answer? Well, what's the favor? Well, are you going to do it or not? I need a favor. I'm like, what's, what's the, the favor? favor? And then it was always like, it's a yes or no question. <laughs> and then you're like, sure. And it's either like going to pick up coffee or like saving a child. You're like, I don't know which one it's going to be. <laughs> and it was just funny. Like, that's how it was. I mean, I can remember, you know, getting off. Of, he would be yelling at you on the phone about something. And hang up the phone. A minute later would pull into the restaurant and be like, hey, man, how's life going? And you're like, you were just, I don't even know what's going on right now. Christmas Eve, 2006, working up at Fish On for the first time. Get done, I think I did a pretty good job. Mike was managing there, everything seemed to be going all right. And at the end of the night, I was waiting around for Mike so we could go home, you know, wrap some presents and watch Christmas Vacation. He goes, yeah, so Matt wanted me to tell you that you're not good enough to work at Fish On, but you're still allowed to work at Northeast. You're just not allowed to work here anymore. And I was like, thanks, Mike. I just yeah. cried the whole way home. My own brother on Christmas Eve sent me home. You're not good enough to work here. But here we are, nine years later. <laughs> yeah. It has a very Charles Dickens feel to it. good enough to work here. Yeah. Every May, he would Every do May. his puffy chest thing where he would threaten the whole new staff. <laughs> Shannon and I have heard it 10 years in a row. We're like, Okay. He's like, you're both going to be there, though, right? You're intimidating. We're nervous. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> Memorial to Labor Day, you're all mine. But make sure you stay hydrated and eat proper food. <laughs> but, not, but, don't eat, but don't eat during work. I don't eat during work. I like the story where he pumped it to help Brad. He said it was too hard. Uh, <laughs> he came in here, touched the bread. It was, like, too hard. He's, like, grabbing, like, 15-year-old buster, 16-year-old buster. He's like, you, out back. Grab all the bread. Start punting it. What? <laughs> Punt it in the marsh. Punt the bread. They're like this, like shaking, like, okay. <laughs> they come back and they're like, we just punted bread. Is that okay? We don't have bread. <laughs> A friend of mine was selling Matt propane at that time. I took his, got Matt's phone number out of my friend's phone, unbeknownst to my friend. Um, called Matt, said, you don't know me, but I think I want to come work with you. He goes, all right, meet me at Books and Coffee. Friday, and this was the Friday of Memorial Day weekend, 8.30. So I show up ready to go to work. I'm in my, in my uniform to go to work after the interview. I walk onto the deck. He's getting up. He goes, hey, you're five minutes early. That's awesome. I got to go. You walked up the steps really well. You carry yourself well. You're hired. I'll talk to you in two months. So I was like, all right, that's fine. So three days later, I am walking across Route 1. I was stepping off the sidewalk and this blue SUV comes barreling down through one doing about 90 miles an hour. Matt was on the blue, he had the blue Nokia brick phone and he saw me, got distracted, let go of the wheel, had the phone, waved at me and in the waving process must have hit the wheel and almost ran, ran me over. I jumped back onto the sidewalk, kind of like crawled back and someone goes, oh my God, did that person just try and kill you? I said, no, 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 that's Matt. I'm going to work for him after the summer. <laughs> But I ran out of fish, 4th of July, at Catch 54, and I knew I was in, I was in deep. So I uh, did what I knew I needed to do with this man, and I made sure I was the first one to tell him. So <laughs> I went outside, I gave him a call, and he goes, what's wrong? I said, um, <laughs> I kinda, kinda effed up. <laughs> And he said, what happened? I said, man, <laughs> we, ran, we, ran out of <laughs> we ran out of fish. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, all right. He said, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. I'm just effing pissed off at the situation. <laughs> and just <laughs> went on and on. That was just... Uh, there's one time where he could have tore me up and still 
I didn't, I didn't get to experience it. Not that I ever wanted to, but. Matt and I have become great friends over the past nine years. And, uh, you know, things I'm gonna miss about Matt are his, his early morning telephone calls to me while I'm still in bed. Uh, he has been up doing work, drinking coffee. How many years did we give him decaf coffee until he figured it out? <laughs> I, I can gave remember him decaf back. Coffee and... for at least ten years. Yeah. So it was like, if you're new, it's like, okay, so if Matt asks you for a cup of coffee, you give, him decaf. give him decaf. Don't tell him it's decaf. And then finally, someone was like, here's your decaf. He's like, what the? F Who? Why are you giving me decaf? <laughs> and they're like, uh, Shannon said to give you decaf. Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> I think Matt's really good at putting people in positions to succeed, you know, and with, with Matt no longer here, I think he, we can all rest assured that it's kind of like a, a proud parent with their kid going off to college. He's instilled all these values and all this hard work ethic, and he now knows that the company will move forward because he's put everybody in positions to succeed. I feel like he gave me a chance when maybe I didn't deserve it, and I'm grateful for that. He showed me hope. He told me whatever I thought mattered. I battled with some of the stuff that he went through, and you know, he showed me hope and gave me a chance and opportunity. And uh, for that, I'm forever grateful. You know, Matt, we're gonna miss you, and uh, we're just gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep your legacy going. We're gonna keep your vision, your dream, and uh, goodbye. He taught me two awesome things that everyone should go by. First thing is that whatever you can do today, do today. Don't wait till tomorrow to do anything, which is all about living in the now, living in the present moment with everything that you do. The second thing, is don't settle for great or good. <laughs> don't settle for good. <laughs> but always try to be great. Great in every way, great in everything that you do. Good is great's worst enemy. <laughs> it's something he taught me. He's helped so many people. And there's so many things we could say about what he's done in such a short amount of time. I'll tell you this though, we're, we're a very strong group of people that he has put in place and put together and this company is just going to continue to strive on and push and help people, help more and more people and teach people to help people and uh, let it continue to go. Thanks.